Hello and welcome to this very special edition of Video Shamanism. I am your host Alex Lift and I'm here with two very wonderful people here, Rick and Linda Smith. We are going to be discussing something very excited about and have a, a wonderful opportunity and honor to be the media director for. It is called the Human Origins Conference and it is in New Mexico. We've got, uh, we've got some things to talk about with this. It's coming up next month, October 12th and 13th. Before we get into the details, though, I just want to introduce Rick and Linda. Linda, Linda, Rick, how are you guys? I'm good. Doing how are good. you? Hi there. <laughs> we're doing good. We're doing good. So, yeah, we were talking a little bit before we went live here, and there are a lot of things to look forward to about this conference. So, uh, first, if, if you don't mind, for all of our listeners out there, what can you tell us about the Human Origins Conference as a general summary? It's an annual event that gets into the uh, mysteries of our human origins and how it relates to alien contact and the cosmos and uh, where we came from, you know, and it talks about all, some of it, uh, it's all highly educational, some of it very controversial, um, all of it eye-opening, and a lot of it people have never even heard before. So it uh, gets the truth out. Um, about who we are, where we come from, and why we're even here. You know, why are things the way they are today? Right. So tell us a little bit about the speakers, uh, presenters that are going to be at the conference. Oh, we have a fantastic lineup here. Okay. Um, we have uh, actually one of the first ones here is uh, Sonia Barrett, and she's an outstanding uh, presenter there. She's also an executive producer of an award-winning award -winning documentary called The Business of Disease, um, which has gotten a lot of um, recognition there around the world. And uh, she's also a, a very prolific uh, author. And um, if you go to the website, humanoriginsconference.com, you see the speakers link there. Each of them have their own speakers page, and you can actually see the links to her books. And, uh, and there's a brief intro to her documentary as well and she's the kind of person that gets into a lot about uh, the holographic universe our matrix where do our beliefs come from uh, everything right on down to religious views political beliefs our beliefs about where we come from you know the origins of uh, our evolution our creation all that and um, she gets into the question of exploring the technology of mind consciousness space and time and it gets into why life exists everywhere you know throughout the whole universe and um, how we define it so it's going to be outstanding listening to her uh, talking about that uh, our consciousness uh, interlinked in a way that supports the simulations um, of the world around us so and uh, her viewpoint is if we're creating it um, then you know what is it that we're buying into if uh, someone else is selling us a bill of goods, so. <laughs> yes, we're, we're in a, a world where we're buying beliefs, we're being programmed. That's, I watched one of her lectures about the human game recently and talking about the programming and how we've all been programmed. It's a, it seems to be becoming a more mainstream idea now that we, mm -hmm. the, the way the mind works and how these beliefs are really shaping our lives. Yes. Yeah, and if you got seven billion people on the planet buying into it, then it kind of feeds into, uh, well, you know, what, what, what's uh, holding this reality together in the first place? So, you know, but um, it's, uh, we are also going to have... Um, the Chinos. The Chinos, uh, Anthony and Tammy Chino. So you want to tell them about them? They're actually going to open up the conference on Friday afternoon with a, a collective sound bath uh, with instruments and singing and the, what do they call those? The singing bowls, harp, um, to get everybody thinking on the same wavelengths and mentally prepared to receive all the messages that we're going to be giving for the conference. And once again, there's a description of what they're going to be doing with their what's referred to as their collective frequency sound bath yeah. on the website, uh, humanoriginsconference.com. And uh, we're very happy to have them there doing the presentation. Um, one of my longtime friends who I've known since 2005, George Haas, is going to be one of our speakers. 
uh, there, and we are extremely happy to have him there. Um, he's been a member of the uh, Planet Planetary SETI Research Society. He's also a founder of uh, the uh, Mars Research Group, the Sedoni Institute. Uh, George uh, and his co-author, William Saunders, they first came on the scene back in 2005 with the publication of his first book, the Sedonia Codex, Reflections from Mars. Uh, about five years later, he followed up with it with an even larger volume called The Martian Codex, More Reflections from Mars. And then a few years after that, uh, actually it was only about, I think five years ago, uh, he came out, uh, they both came out with a, uh, a DVD called The Mars Codex, great documentary. And um, it is absolutely phenomenal what he talks about and um, uh, because he gets into Mesoamerica, Mayan mostly, but also Incan, Aztec, and Olmec, and focuses on the connection between Mesoamerica, Mayan civilization, and Mars, the Sidonia Plateau. And a lot of the, what he refers to as the geoglyphs, matching up with the bifurcated face masks of the Mayan empire, the Mayan civilization. Mm -hmm. uh, and the common ground between the two there as almost like this, um, this dialogue between the two planets, okay? Um, he, uh, he picks up where Richard Hoagland left off with the face on Mars. He actually knows Richard Hoagland too. And, but uh, goes even further than that, um, showing the bifurcated faces on Mars too with the geoglyphs, following the same method. You know, you fold it over one way, it looks like this. You fold it over the other way, it looks like that. And the running theme is that there's always two animals or two entities or two gods or two beings attached to each geoglyph. Mm -hmm. So the face on Mars, by example, you flip it one way, it looks like a primate with African features wearing an Egyptian headdress. You flip it, the, or, or even uh, you flip it the other way, it looks like a, uh, a lion. So, um, and that was, even as early as Richard Hogan's research, a connection between the Sphinx on Earth, Sphinx on Mars, in the form of the face. Um, in the Human Origins Conference, George is going to actually be focusing on the uh, keyhole structure, uh, the parrot, um, the three-sided pyramid, and all, which has been proven to be geometrically perfect and correct in every way. Uh, plus the anatomical studies on the parrot structure, it's a perfect anatomy, all right? Uh, you know, this is not something that was just spray painted on a rock, all right? But um, this is a huge geoglyph in the Sidonian, just north of the face on Mars, all. And he even goes as far as showing in one of the bifurcated geoglyphs on Mars, uh, the face of what's suspected to be an alien hybrid child. Um, something that sort of looks human, but it has this kind of like advanced alien look to it uh, with waves of energy coming out of it. So, but um, he's got a lot to talk about. He's also going to be focusing on um, a little known story about an actual Star Wars mm -hmm. that took place between uh, Mars and Earth and the Mayan, uh, the Mayan civilization told of this story in their mythology. This battle that took place between the planets and, um, you know, this star battle, very much like you see in George Lucas's movie. So um, that's going to be phenomenal to hear too because most people don't realize that ancient civilizations have those high-tech stories that, you know, all the good science fiction is based on in the first place, you know. And alien contact is very much a part of what George is showing here with these geoglyphs. So that's not something definitely not to be missed there. Um, and next one on the plate here, which we're extremely happy to have, is uh, Ken Johnston. Now, Ken Johnston has uh, been talking for several years now as a NASA whistleblower on the structures on the moon artificial structures, structures that are not supposed to be there, shiny metallic-like structures that look like an entire array of satellite dishes in the craters on the moon, right by the rim where the dark side would begin, okay? The part where the uh, Apollo astronauts 
were supposedly told that they weren't supposed to cross over and go into. So, um, but these are original unscrubbed photos, unscrubbed high resolution photos. This is not the low res garbage that NASA puts out. Uh, George Haas can attest to that too, because his research, he has to battle with getting the high res versions too. But um, no, uh, Ken Johnston has always held on to this original set of high res photos of these artificial man made or alien made or a hybrid of the two structures on the moon that don't belong there. And it's beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's a satellite array. It's beyond a shadow of a doubt that the structures are going into the surface of the moon, down underground, <coughs> referencing a hollow moon, okay? Which coincides in a lot of ways with the stuff I've learned over the years myself about the dark side of the moon remaining on the dark side because there's a big old giant hangar bay there for Russia and America and possibly China to cooperate with and use it, which goes back to the stories of um, the whole, you know, collision with Planet X or Nibiru and all, all, those, that, all those mythologies, all right? And this moon being an artificial round tin can or a Dyson sphere or whatnot being pulled in from Pluto or way out on the outer rim of the solar system and never even belonging to us in the first place. Yeah, um, there's a lot of evidence even in traditional mainstream science that says that the moon is way older than what yeah. doesn't seem to align. I, and it's an old piece of technology like the Death Star. Okay, so. Exactly. You know, exactly. But uh, no, Ken Johnston shows these photos that are, uh, you, they're incontestable and it's just shocking what he has there. So he's been talking about the, uh, the, the dark side of NASA's agenda no pun intended, of um, them to scrub the photos all the time. And once you start knowing what to look for, you start picking up on where the digitized scrub out is of what's something that's supposed to be there. You know, This ties in with our next speaker who has worked with him consistently. Didn't they just make a book together? Yes, I believe so. Um, in fact, Ken's, Ken's book is on the speaker page on the website at humanoriginsconference.com. Ken's Moon, Revealing the Dark Mission of NASA, all right, to put out these false photos or these scrub photos. In the good old days, they would airbrush. Nowadays, they just digitize it and retouch it, you know? But they don't do a very good job because no. once he started showing the details of a scrub photo, I was like, ah, even I, I did a better job than that at the New York Post. So, and you know, uh, I remember looking at one of the pictures in the background, yeah. the space, the black part was just so flat black. There was nothing, not even a star out there. And you're like, um, yeah, I don't think that's really possible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Like, where's, where's the stars? Where's there was the stars? nothing. It was like a complete black screen in the background. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, but, but this ties in with our next speaker. Uh, Brett Collins Shepard. Now, Brett, uh, it seems like we have this consistent Mars Moon theme going on here with our speakers this year. But uh, Brett is an artist himself, very much like George Haas. And he has taken his artistic skills in a direction that um, is quite original. Uh, he has actually gone after the idea of what Sonia Barrett talks about, our consciousness creating our reality, okay? And he shows these, in the way that George, Shaw, George Haas shows geoglyphs, he actually shows images that, in, in sort of like pictographs, images, some of them look like full-blown uh, drawings, paintings, right? Embedded in the rock face of Mars and the moon. And he's close friends with Ken Johnston, so his research overlapped with Ken's. Yeah. And he's the one that helped Ken put together you know, the photograph's the right way to show what's going on with the moon. But then Brett took it one step further and said, wait a minute, we have a collective conscious in our mythology on these ancient artifacts like the moon or ancient artifacts on Mars, okay? So he starts showing the language, this artistic language embedded in the rock face. And the way he does it, he shows these mythological stories 
that we all take for granted playing themselves out that are kind of like another form of communication just to see what level of intelligence the human race is at. Can we pick this out? Are we smart enough to pick it out? Okay. And it's phenomenal what he shows and the, uh, the traditional classical mythological stories that the, uh, the landscapes of Mars and the moon end up reflecting back to us because they absorbed all these stories. So it's something like no other. I've never seen anybody else do that. No, me neither. But um, it's truly amazing. Plus, of course, he's got this image of what looks like the, uh, the Jupiter 2 UFO um, from the science fiction series, uh, Lost in Space, uh, embedded in the side of a Martian cliff. Okay? And it's either an artificial observatory that was built out of the rock cliff with glass and metal, glass windows, or it was a UFO that embedded itself in there somehow and no one took it out. <laughs> so, um, so it's either an observation deck for a military base or an underground base or something else. And it's irrefutable once you look at it, you're like, yeah, that doesn't really belong there. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm trying to find some of his drawings, but I don't see them anymore. Anyway. And uh, once again, ah. His, his books and links are on the um, Human Origins Conference website. Now, um, his, uh, um, his companion or wife, significant, significant other. other, okay, is also going to be speaking there. And she's also friends with Ken Johnson. And um, her name is Karen Christine Patrick. And we are extremely happy to have her there as one of our speakers. She gets into a lot with Anunnaki history, okay? Mm -hmm. How it affects Earth, how it affects the cosmology of our solar system, and then brings it to how does it affect, let's say, um, uh, European and Mediterranean history, okay? And where it went from there. What cultures, past and present, even the ones that were lost and buried, um, what, you know, what was their connection to the uh, Anunnaki or the Pleiadians, okay? Um, and how did that come to be to where we are today with our modern day civilization? Um, I've always said she's like a walking library. Once you get her going, her talks are phenomenal to listen to and you truly get a powerful uh, education uh, from her every time. So, um, and she gets a lot into ancient history because of that. Okay. and brings it up to the present as to where we are right now. What she's going to be talking about... Um, it's called the underworld. Underfoot. Yeah, the underworld and the mythology and the history of underworld civilizations or civilizations that went underground here on Earth. And uh, where did those mythologies come from? Why do surface-dwelling cultures and civilizations all have this common mythology about other civilizations going underground? which is interesting to know because Mayan civilization <laughs> talks about coming out of the earth and so do uh, the Turkish people. Ankara, the capital, they have a whole underground system there. They, they don't even know how old certain sections are there, okay? Uh, and Mars, when you look at the stories of Mars, um, the, um, the so-called secret space program um, that they refer to, in conjunction with the military on Mars right now, even those stories talk about, well, why do you see kind of like these hit and miss photos from Mars of something that looks like a creature or a biped or a humanoid being that doesn't belong there, but where are the others then? Well, the thing is, once in a while, you catch one coming out from underground, <clears throat> but supposedly there's a couple of civilizations that went underground because of the cataclysm there and never came out. They got so used to living underground. And in a lot of cases, I think that feeds into as well the inner earth uh, mythos here on earth. You, you look at what these commercial international construction crews go through when they dig down into the earth. And this story is of them hitting a certain level where they see this mysterious blue light coming from where? Where the hell's the blue light coming from, okay? And they didn't go any further because they got scared, but they heard voices. And this also coincides with uh, 
um, Admiral Byrd and Admiral Perry, their expeditions to the Arctic and Antarctica. And, you know, one of them, I believe it was Admiral Byrd, coming back with his hat in hand and his military taken away from him, sent back to President Eisenhower, saying, send a word to your president. If you come back here again, we're going to come out and wipe the floor up with you. Don't come back here again. Yep. Which uh, kind of explains why nobody went back to the Arctic, but everybody's down in Antarctica. <laughs> so <laughs> what's down there? Why is that the safe end? You know, and Arctic, the Arctic seems to be the dangerous end that nobody wants to contend with. Uh, it also coincides with the stories coming out of China. Why, why did China go after Tibet in the 50s? Why did they just suddenly out of the blue decide to start slaughtering all the Tibetan monks, wipe them out? Um, because um, at one point I had heard a couple of stories coming out that they forced a Tibetan monk to his knees at gunpoint and said, you see those two big doors in the mountain? I want you to open them. And the monk was like, I can't do that for you. And they shot him dead. So supposedly mm -hmm. even China has a vested interest in the underworld and they wanted their hands on that door in the Himalayas. And who knows if they ever opened it, but that would be like, you know, the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. I wonder what happened to China at that point. So um, there's a lot of this that culminates in Karen Christine Patrick's lecture with the underworld and the mythologies, both with Earth, which is gonna be her main focus, and with Mars, and even the moon. I mean, the moon's hollow. So you could even throw that into the mix too. Um, and, I think that's everybody, right? No, there's one more speaker. Oh, that guy. Yeah, there's one more. Me. Yeah, who, who is that? <laughs> I heard about this. Guy. Yeah. He's a crazy so, white guy, you know. I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, I don't know why anybody listens to him. But <laughs> I, I will be uh, the seventh speaker there talking as well. And my main focus is going to be on the three things that basically sum up everything happening on this planet, which is the Moorish legacy of the Masonic agenda and alien contact or extraterrestrial intervention. And how that has, that trifecta there has been the foundation of everything from prehistorical times to ancient times to modern times to current affairs and bringing it all up to speed as to, you know, how does ancient history relate to the fact that we have a corrupt government that is so racist and, and misogynistic? You know, what's the connection there? Ancient history is not that far off and it's not disconnected. And you have to know where you come from in the past to know where you're going in the present and the near future. So, and my viewpoint in my lecture is to get people on track with understanding the role that they play and how did they get here to this point? Um, you know, it's, uh, if you don't, this is why a lot of people feel lost today because they see this all as chaos. No, it's basically, you know, certain elements being backed into a corner because we're all waking up. We're all waking up to the matrix. We're all waking up to this manufactured reality that Sonia Barrett talks about. We're all waking up to the geoglyphs and the relationship between Mars, Earth, and the moon, okay? And, um, you know, there's certain elements that don't like that uh, because it means it, it uh, you know, undercuts their ability to uh, keep things under control. So my viewpoint um, is just a very powerful education on Words we take for granted every day. Where did those words come from? Because once you know the words you're talking in, the language you're talking in, the lexicon you're using, it becomes very empowering to realize how you've been shooting yourself in the foot. Okay? Um, we were just talking about it before. Where does the word amen come from? I mean, you know, that's a great place to start. But other words in my lecture, uh, devil, angel, you know, how did the concept of a vampire and a werewolf come into existence, okay? God, uh, demon, um, shadow, dog, cat, okay? Human, all right? Mm -hmm. These are all words we take for granted for and wouldn't even think about them having extraterrestrial origins, good, bad, or indifferent, okay? So I talk about where these words come from to help empower people 
so that they don't feel helpless about the situation that they're in today. And it gives them a much more powerful perspective as to the power, the, the role that they play. Is once you understand where your words come from and also our institutions, okay? Why did religion come into existence? Uh, why have we always been told that religion came first and science came second when that's completely untrue, okay? Science came first, religion came second, and there's a reason for that. Um, how did the institution of marriage come into existence? All that stuff, all right? Uh, why is the human race constantly stuck in the rut of overpopulation? Like we're in this, this mindless breeding program, just pumping kids out because we're brainwashed with the idea of, I have the right to do that. That's, you know, that's my definition in life. Well, no, it's not. You know, you should take care of the ones you have first instead of just dumping more into the equation that you know you can't take care of. All right. Henceforth, creating a creating emphasis on the word creating a gloom and doom scenario or an extinction level event that never needed to exist in the first place. Yeah. So the power of creation is in our hands here and we have to take responsibility. You can't be blaming it on God, the devil, aliens, or, you know, as much as I would love to blame it on the imbecile in the white house, the point is we put them there. Right. right. So, if we put them there, then it's time to start taking responsibility. And when I talk about stuff in my lecture, it's the hope of getting people away from not just the helpless mentality, but also looking for the boogeyman mentality, the conspiracy mentality, okay? Because that predominantly is an awful mentality to be stuck in because now you're always looking for someone else to blame with a chip on your shoulder. You're not going to get anything accomplished that way if it's always somebody else's fault. Okay. So a lot, I talk about ancient history. I talk about the cosmos. I talk about where the two party system came from and um, the direct connection to the two sides of the alien equation, the alien abduction phenomena on one side and extraterrestrial invention on the other. And these are not the same thing. Wow. Wow. So this conference is going to be epic. <laughs> yes. And we are really looking forward to having all of our speakers there. Yes. We also have some really awesome vendors there. And we have about 14 tables left for vendors to get signed up for. Um, or less than that. Okay. But um, we have uh, one of the committee members from the New Mexico UFO and Paranormal Forum. Um, the forum itself is a sponsor for the conference. So, but Gloria Hawker is one of the committee members. She's a prominent author. She's well known in the UFO community. She has worked uh, in a big way with uh, Dr. John Mack and Bud Hopkins in the past um, as hypnotherapist. hypnotherapist as well. And she's also worked with the author Eve Lorgan, who discusses the alien love bite issue. Okay. Um, but Gloria Hawker. It has had some powerful uh, extraterrestrial experiences. She's going to be there as one of our vendors. So she's going to have her books there. She's going to be talk talking at the vendor table there for whoever would like to meet her, which I think would be a lot of people. Uh, we have a uh, powerful healer there by the name of Larry Porter or LD Porter, very well known. Um, he's got his own book out there that was co-authored by a, uh, a, a a uh, psychologist as well, a prominent psychologist who vouched for him and studied him, okay? Um, so we are very happy to have L.D. Porter there as one of our vendors are out. We also have um, Susan, Zumo. Susan Zumo, who is a phenomenal, uh, dead-on, accurate reader. And I think people are going to get quite a bit out of her type of um, healing program that she has. Um, I forget the name of it. It's Soma Pi. Soma Pi, right. Okay. Um, these vendors are also uh, on the website at humanoriginsconference.com. Just click on the vendors link at the top. You'll see who we have already. People who sign on as a vendor, they get their business advertised on the website as well as all of our other social media platforms. Okay. So that's easy advertising oh. for the cost of a vendor table. All right. Um, we have Cheryl. 
we have Cheryl Arndt, who does these phenomenal organite pyramids. And she uses gold and crystals and, and gemstones. All healing um, resources from the earth she puts in these pyramids. They're yeah. a beautiful. Wow. Yeah, she does an amazing job with them. And uh, people are going to love seeing those. Uh, we have Pampered Chef. Pampered Chef, yes. With um, Crystal, oh, let me look up her name real quick here. Sure. We have it? Crystal, I only have Crystal. Okay, and um, so everybody loves the Pampered Chef, and uh, she is going to be there. She's the only Pampered Chef vendor there. Uh, I think everybody will love seeing that. Um, we also have uh, Bethany Pye. Yes, but she's sharing a table with somebody else. Too. Yes. Um, Chantal Fidanza and Bethany Pye are going to be at a table together. Bethany Pye does a great job with um, her channeling capabilities with what she refers to as angels. And we've seen her uh, do this. So she's very good at what she do. People are going to love talking with her. Chantal Fidanza does healing with horses, believe it or not, and uh, uses actually horses and communicates with them in that way to help people. And uh, we thought that was quite original as well. Mm -hmm. So, but um, aside of that, we still we have- one more coming. Uh, she's not on there yet. She's, oh. she's a Hungarian tea leaf reader. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, cool. That's like <laughs> one of those like legit old fashioned divination. Artists. Yeah, so I don't have all of her information yet. She hasn't finished signing up, <clears throat> but she's the most recent vendor. So for all of these people out there listening to this that may have some, uh, uh, they'd like to offer themselves as vendors, uh, where can they go to sign up or get in touch with you guys? They can go right to humanoriginsconference.com. There's a vendor tab. At they the just top. click on that. They can fill out the vendor application and they can submit their fee via PayPal or send us a check. Okay, right. cool. So we'll definitely do that. Um, yeah, so what, what is your vision when, uh, let's see, the, what is the best case scenario? Because in your, in, your, in your new book, there's a lot of talk about the, it's like a, there's a revolution going on right now. And yeah. in our consciousness on the planet with everything. So and, uh, what, what is the uh, outcome of this? What, what is your best case scenario outcome uh, at, in the uh, aftermath of all of this? My, my vision is seeing a full room of people who at the end of it are leaving, everybody leaving with something that they needed in order to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so, and, and even on a, on a larger scale, like what, what do you see as <laughs> the, the, the uh, once, once humanity and the world at large recognizes where we come from, how we got here and perhaps where we could go, what, what do you think is going to be the best case scenario in that, in that world view? Cause we're living, it's like we're in the world's going through a big transition right now. So, yeah, I would say the, uh, the best case scenario is that we start taking care of each other the right way. We get rid of this caste system or this corporate system of economic slavery and start caring for people like we should, instead of looking at the homeless or poverty stricken, as a scar on the face of a corporate driven economy. Okay. Um, we put more of an emphasis back on mom and pop capitalism instead of big corporations. Um, we start recognizing the fact that um, people have to take more of an active role in their own government and stop looking at, the, at their own government as this abstract thing over there that they don't understand. We go back to civics lessons. One of the biggest problems is nobody understands their own government. They see it as this thing that exists like a burden instead of, a, a, um, instead of an honorable obligation. Okay? I also think that once they, everybody finally realizes that we are all connected, we are all one, governments not that important once they realize that we all have the power within us to create our own reality 
Yeah, it's, it, goes, uh, it goes towards a one world government. Yeah. Yeah, and it makes me think of the cells in the human body too, because even the word government in Latin roughly translates to to control the mind. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the how this all is the government. cells in our body are individual entities that if you were to take onto a petri dish, the cells can live on their own without you. But when you put them into the community of the human body, they're connected to this collective intelligence that only yes. really ha they have ac the cells have access to you when they work together. Yeah. So, right. And if, if we world. stopped for a minute, stopped fighting with each other mm -hmm. and just connect, actually just hold hands, you'd see the power that we have of being together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there have been a lot of uh, experiments done that prove that fact that when we come together with a coherent, positive, conscious intention, that it affects the world at large. Like even yes. mass meditations where crime rates are going down and everything like that. So the Human Origins Conference is going to be a great focal point for this new reality or this emerging reality. It's so so much so. So I'm re I'm really excited about it, and I know you guys are too. And we got a lot of yes. great presenters come in, a lot of people come in. And uh, for anybody that wants more information on the Human Origins Conference, again, go to humanoriginsconference.com. Yeah. All the information on the speakers are there, the dates. Again, it's October 12th and 13th, correct? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, cool. And what's the name of the, the it's at Rio Rancho, Rancho Rio, is it? It's, it's, the city is Rio Rancho. The venue is the inn at Rio Rancho. An event center. Yeah. yeah. Right, in the land of enchantment, as they say. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if anybody's coming from outside of Albuquerque or Rio Rancho, there is a hotel on site. They can stay there. We have rooms saved for anybody who's coming to the conference. Fantastic. That's really good information for people to have. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, is there anything else that we'd like to talk about in terms of the event? I think that it's really, we're at, we're at a good place. We gave a good description of all the presenters and the content of what we're, everyone's going to be speaking about. The only other thing is the ticket sale does include breakfast and dinner with the speakers on Saturday. Okay, got you. Okay. And the, oh, yes. the tickets are on sale right now. We are having an end of month blowout. It's only eighty dollars. Great for both days. For both days plus the two meals. That's a deal. That hands down. That's a deal. If I know. Area, definitely got to come to this. It's it's the first annual Human Origins Conference. Many more to come from this. And as more people wake up to this world view. Uh, this is going to be, it's like, you're going to want to have come to this event. You're going to want to be there when it, when it starts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. Well, thank you so much, guys. I, I, I think that this is a good place to kind of close it up here and just, again, remind everybody, go to the human, human, human origins conference.com. Yes. Not human organs. As some people have been thinking that it says. <laughs> no, not human organs conference. That's no. Human origins conference.com. <laughs> Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. I look forward to having more conversations with you guys about tons of stuff. I mean, there's so many things that we could talk about. I love hearing your input and your, your everything you guys are doing right now. I'm just very, very happy and, and proud to, to be in this world with you guys. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. So uh, what we'll do is we'll post this video online and bring it to Facebook and YouTube and Maybe make some clips, put it on Instagram and Twitter. Let's just put it across all the social media as much as possible to give people a visual reminder of how awesome this event is going to be. Yes. Definitely this event. It is such a deal, and you're going to have so much fun. I look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Alex. All right, guys. You have a uh, lovely rest of the day. You yes, too. Yes, you too. Bye-bye. All right, take it easy. Thank you.